Hey guys, welcome to Breakout Airsoft. In today's video, I'll be talking about my brand new Airsoft rifle. And you might have seen this rifle popping in out in a couple of other videos, but I have never got a chance to review it until today. So this is the PTW made by FCC. And I'll be doing a two part video. The, and this one we will talk about the, uh, the PTW system itself. And the other video, I'll be going over my setup. So PTW stands for Professional Training Weapons. It is originally designed for uh, military and law enforcement training purposes. So as a training weapon, you it needs to be this spec. The dimension needs to be mil spec, so it will resemble the real firearm as close as close as possible. As for the performance, the trigger response and and reliability also needs to be better than the normal average airsoft gun. So just to recreate an airsoft gun to be as close as possible to the real firearm. Of course, there's no recoil, but you, you get what I mean with the dimension and trigger uh, response. And FCC is um, Fight Club Custom, and they are a Hong Kong based PTW maker. And the original maker of PTW is Systema. And the reason why I chose FCC over Systema is for a couple of reasons. And well, if you look it up online, some people will argue system is better than FCC. So some will say FCC might be better. But in my personal opinion, every brand has a ups and downs, and everybody has a different experience with different brand. And if you need to do a true comparison, you need at least a few dozen samples in the same condition and test them out beside each other in order to conclude which brand is better. But anyway, so. The reason why I chose FCC over Systema is because if I have bought a Systema PTW and if there's anything wrong with the airsoft gun and all the gunsmiths in Hong Kong, well I, I don't know all of them but they're mostly not a Systema employee so their fixing PTW experience is based on their past history or their you know they're, they're gaining the experience from fixing a lot of systema in order to become a gunsmith and on the other hand FCC they are the maker and builder of the of their own PTW so they have all these specs they have all the dimension and stuff so if there's anything wrong with the gun I can send it to them and they can literally rebuild the whole thing for me so in the end and that's why I chose FCC for the PTW so going <coughs> in the gun we're gonna go from top to top to back so let me just take down the rifle first so like a GBBR or real steel you get two take down pin you can separate the lower and upper receiver but for now I'm just going to pop out the top so you can see the inside Okay, so I just open up the PTW and in here they have what they call a cylinder. I'll talk about this in a bit. At the front, same as your other other airsoft rifle, you get your barrel and the hop-up chamber. Now in order to adjust the hop-up, you need to hold down the dust cover. The charging handle, you can't really pull it back. There's no bolt lock or anything. So, and you can see the rotary style hop-up adjustment. And this one is their Gen 3 hop-up chamber. The Gen 1 did not have the rotary adjustment. The Gen 2 is made of, uh, I think it's made of cast iron or cast metal. And the Gen 3 is made by CNC aluminum. So you can expect a higher precision uh, manufacturing process on the hop chamber so you get your barrel and hop chamber and you get a cylinder inside a the cylinder there is a piston and a spring and this is where the power comes from and if you want to change the FPS of the gun you can do it two ways you can either take this off and change to a different springs or you can actually get another cylinder like what I did for different power so this one is about 1.2 ish joules and this one is about 1.5 and it's intended for CQB and outdoor so I can use the same gun so I have the same setup same gun for both games 
and I will use this this cylinder for also for more FPS and more power. And something different between the FCC cylinder and the Systema. In the Systema cylinder, they have a ring at the end where they also have to mill a little ring here. And I guess the purpose is to um, let the the government or whoever in charge know that it is a S open and not a build steel. But FCC has eliminated that process, so making the modding easier. And as you can see, there's a little knob here. This knob goes in here so this is cleavage and alignment so once the alignment is, hit, is in place the cylinder does not rotate so the gearbox at the bottom can latch on to the piston in line so that's the barrel hop shaver and cylinder at the back here it is this is the battery compartment and the MOSFET is also installed in here so that's the MOSFET and in here they have the electronic trigger control unit also the gearbox the gearbox is only about this size so it's a lot smaller than your average AG gearbox and the motor is on the piston grip and let's take a look at the battery compartment so you remove the bus stock. Here is the battery compartment. Now there's one thing that I don't like about the battery compartment is that I can't find a battery that is small enough to fit in the hole all the way down and close the cap. So when I put the battery in, some wire is still sticking out. So it kind of bothers me for a bit for some reason. I I'm going to put a battery to show you guys. Okay, so I put the battery in and this is what I mean and this is the so far the best way the most compact way or, or as far as I can shove it down because the battery uh, I guess it's because it's new spec the buffer tube is not really that big and the battery kind of stuck somewhere here and if I push it down too far I am afraid that I will have some trouble pulling it out so having a unit system like this I wish someone can make a instead of a wire they can make some kind of connector and I can put a stick battery in and connect way to the end so I can close the battery cap okay so at the moment that's not bother me as much because I'm not going to set my bus stop all the way in here and I usually set it around two or three spaces so which is around somewhere here so the it does not affect the battery and I can st and it, it is my length and as I was, I was mentioning the trigger response it's very fast and now let's talk about the magazine the magazine is a little different the magazine is a little bit different than the both GBB and AEG magazine, you need you actually need an adapter for it. As you can see, there's a little. There are two clamps here, which clamps down the uh, BB. So in order to load the BB, you need an adapter. You need to hold the clamps outward. You can see the clamps here. So you need to hold the clamps outward in order to feed the BBs in. And also on the last round, after the magazine is empty, you can see this not popping up. This activates the, this also pops up the lever at the back. And this lever triggers the, another unit in here, which stops the, cuts the power completely. So even if you put it, push it back down, as soon as it is inserted in the gun, it activates the last stop. So this resembles so this resembles a real firearm where you, the gun won't fire after the magazine is empty. I guess it's the same feature as, as nowadays. There's also the next gen, all those EBB also has these features, but 
they were the first two made it. So you have to hold down the bolt release button in order to fire. And all these pins, they are all these little pins here, they are only display only. And there's no pin actually going through because of, of the gearbox in here. And I have safe, semi, and auto, and the auto is also programmable to change between auto and three round burst. And currently I have set it to three round burst. So this is the initial review on the PTW system. And I have not yet game with this scanner, so I can't talk about its performance. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video later on. I have a game coming up. And right now we're going to be doing a combo test on both of the cylinder and maybe we should we'll do some grouping tests also. And after the corner test, I'm going to do a short range accuracy test or grouping test. And I only have a seven meters range at home and I have not yet turned the gun yet. So we'll mainly be looking at the grouping. So I'm going to do a one, four, two, three drills. And the red dot, I have set it at 30 meters for my Tokyo Marie four and six. So if I'm aiming up here, I'm expecting to land somewhere here at seven meters. So let's see how that goes. And later on, um, I'll tune my gun at the game, so I'll, I'll turn it back to 20 to 30 meters and then we'll, I'll do a, a update grouping test later on. Okay, so you've just seen the IRC test on the drill. Now I actually have to make another one. I have to tape it further up because the previous street, it got too low and it went off the chart. So you can see the one, four, two, and three grouping. So I say in rapid fire, you can still get a decent size. And I have some BBs left. So I did another IRC test and this one, I shoot it one by one and I was standing up holding the gun by itself and I also did another one with with support and the support that I have is only uh, I was leaning the gun against my wall so I couldn't get a little bit of support on my door frame as you can see the support one did a little better now um, in real life scenario you see this grouping is about half a hand size it's about half my fist so Maybe you're in a CQB game at 7 meters away, somebody is sticking his hand out with a gun and I guess you can hit that hand. 
So this is the 7 meters grouping test and accuracy test of the FCC PDW. So another thing that I forgot to mention and I think it's worth mentioning of the cylinder is uh, well, well, one of them is this little cut hole here and this little cut holes allow me to have a three quarter air volume. So what it means is it allows some air to escape so it won't go over power and by the way, I have a M90 spring in here to make a 1.2 joules and I have a 1 M110 spring for 1.5 joules. If I have a full cylinder with this whole covering up, so all the air will not escape and all the air will go into the BBs and it will easily go over the 2 joules limit, which is a legal uh, firing limit in Hong Kong. And the other thing, the other thing that I think is worth mentioning is the color of the cylinder. In Sistema, you get a red, blue, green, and I think purple, and each color is corresponding to different spring or different power. And in a way, that's kind of limited your flexibility. So when I have two cylinder, if I ever want to change the spring on this one, let's say a M130, I do not have to get another cylinder or I do not have to become confused of the color of the cylinder. I can just we we cut this little knob here. Well, currently, I have let me blue and actually wait one one point five, so I know exactly what powers that I have. So if I change to a M one thirty spring, and maybe I'll get one point eight power, and I just wipe this off, put one point eight, and having the same silver or the stainless steel color cylinder, instead of having something like you have a red cylinder. They're supposed to shoot about 1.3 joules and then you change the spring and it shoots 1.6 but you forgot about it and it's still wet so and you get a one FPS setup so I think there's another thing that's worth mentioning of the FCC cylinder so this concludes the initial review on the FCC PDW system and let me know in the comments if you have any questions and please support the channel by liking and subscribe and I'll be doing a setup video later on and see you guys next time